I'm somewhat embarrassed to admit that I don't have a strong connection with the works of Hideki Kamiya, the director and creator of Bayonetta. Whether it's Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, or Okami, these are all games that I have bought and played over the years, but for one reason or another, I have never finished a single one of them. That all changed recently, however, when Bayonetta 2's impending release on the Wii U inspired me to fire up the original on the Xbox 360. It's a game that is adored and passionately defended by fans, and its sequel became one of the most talked about and controversial exclusives on Nintendo's newest console. It's often described as the perfect action game, so I had to see for myself what it was all about. Now that I've played through it, I understand why it has such a strong following, and also why it not being on Sony and Microsoft consoles has angered so many players. At its core, Bayonetta is a case study in deep but accessible gameplay. It can be enjoyed both by those who just want to experience its story and action, but perhaps more importantly, by those who want to take the time and effort to master its intricate combat system. And what a combat system it is. Different combos can be performed effortlessly through a seemingly endless string of punch and kick inputs, and buttons can be long pressed to maximize combo strings. A feature called Witch Time can be activated while dodging enemy attacks at the last second to slow down time and give the player an opportunity to further build their combos and score without taking any damage. Combos can also be interrupted and continued through the game's innovative dodge offset system, which can dramatically increase a player's performance once its timing and use have been mastered. The game doesn't do a good job of explaining this, however, and while I'm not there yet in terms of fully understanding it, it's one of the more addictive aspects of Bayonetta's advanced gameplay techniques. The game takes place over the course of 16 chapters broken into several verses, bookended by a playable prologue and epilogue. It took me approximately 15 hours to complete, although much of that time was spent in the game's many cutscenes, which are far too long-winded and could have greatly benefited from the help of a good story editor. Speaking of Bayonetta's story, I found most of it to be nonsensical, but I suppose it did an okay job of giving the cast motives to keep moving forward. The characters themselves are excellent, however, possessing strong, memorable personalities and energetic voice work. Visually, Bayonetta looks good, with a game engine that does its best to run at 60 frames per second. It slows down quite a bit throughout, but not enough to be a detriment to gameplay. Cutscenes run at half the frame rate, possibly for cinematic effect, but it can be distracting seeing the engine's performance change so frequently. Don't ignore those cutscenes though. You have to stay on your toes, since quick time events where you can die instantly often occur during what are otherwise non-interactive cinematics. The game's graphics also exhibit excessive screen tearing, which is an unfortunate blow to its visual presentation. Animation in Bayonetta is superb, however, and although the character models show their age, they convey realistic emotion through their facial expressions and movement. Bayonetta herself is fluidly animated, with attacks that chain together seamlessly. Her hair-based wicked weave and climax attacks are particularly noteworthy, as there are huge, screen-filling creations that bring to mind the memorable summons from the Final Fantasy series. Environments are nicely constructed, although you will find yourself running down empty, barren hallways more often than you'd like, as well as solving primitive, sometimes unintuitive puzzles which all feel like holdovers from the PlayStation 2 generation and can slow the game down to a crawl. There are some true standout locales though, with most chapters having a unique feel and set pieces. On the audio side of things, Bayonetta is a stunner. The soundtrack is an energetic mixture of vocal pop, sexy jazz, and grandiose choral and classical arrangements. They give the game its texture and atmosphere, and elevate the game's action to the next level. Not only that, but with the Sega partnership and Kamiya's love of old Sega games, Bayonetta is peppered with arranged music from classic Sega games such as Space Harrier, Afterburner, Outrun, and Fantasy Zone. Sound effects are not only well done, but are essential to performing well in combat. Enemies have a visual or audio cue that will telegraph an incoming attack, and with so much action and chaos going on around you, sometimes you will have to let your ears see for you. Mini games are a sizable part of Bayonetta's gameplay, and while they are fun diversions, they slow down the pacing of the game and ultimately overstay their welcome. It's unfortunate that Platinum Games saw the need to draw out these stages the way they did. These would have been better served as a medley of the different game styles blended into a single chapter. As it is, they end up feeling out of place due to their vastly different gameplay, and overindulgent as well because of their excessive length. Boss encounters, on the other hand, are intimidating and memorable. Most of them have an intuitive feel that makes fighting them very fun and satisfying. 
Couple this with Bayonetta's finishing moves, and these become some of the game's most standout and satisfyingly visceral sequences. In terms of replay value, Bayonetta brings it. Not only are there a wealth of items and secret battles to discover, but there are also challenging hidden stages that will test her skills and mastery of the game's techniques. Its ranking system will also have perfectionists coming back over and over again to achieve the game's highest pure platinum rating, which essentially requires a player to get through each chapter with a high combo score, low time, and zero damage. Pure platinum runs are not an easy feat, and definitely not for the faint of heart at the game's highest difficulty, where witch time is disabled. Equipable accessories will help, but button mashers will not get far beyond normal mode. This game requires dedication, concentration, and mastery to extract everything it has to offer. In closing, Bayonetta is one of the best pure action games I've played in a long time. Its combat system is incredibly refined, but there are some flaws holding it back, including gimmicky minigames, instant death quick time events, performance issues, and pacing. The foundation, however, is one of the most solidly executed ones in existence, and is an experience that action fans should not miss.